welcome back to the build of our teardrop trailer and uh, hopefully you're coming along with your project as well as this one's coming along and uh, so far I'm pretty pleased with it. So today we're going to get ready to prepare and install our ceiling. So the first thing that we're going to do is install a spar uh, on the inside walls so when we wrap the ceiling on the inside it'll have something to rest to and we can attach it at the bottom from the inside then we can get our ceiling on and then we can run our spars across the top. But before we start on that, I thought I'd take you around and show you some of the things that I've kind of tinkered with on here uh, to get it at this stage because now we're ready to start install the ceiling. So let me show you what I've done. So to start with, I made my little pull handles and uh, they're about four inches wide, one inch is high and about a half inch thick and a 45 degree bevel here on this bottom edge so you can put your fingers under there and pull that lid right up and then I just attached it with a couple of screws in behind so uh, very simple real nice and neat and you can see a couple of screws that I've installed here pretty solid and it works great so I think uh, I think those turned out well. They look nice. Uh, we still have a little bit of trim work to do along this edge here and put a nice, nice little railing in there uh, to finish that off. But that was the first thing that I did. The second thing I did is I installed my little uh, braces here on the front just like I did on the back. Um, that way when I wrap the ceiling I'll have something to attach to. And all I did is just set a piece of wood up here, traced it from the outside, cut and sanded it just like the back, and then uh, glued it in place. I put a put a couple of well, just one staple on each one, and I also pocket drilled the back edge so it fastens to the frame. And uh, yep, looks good. So we're ready to start installing the ceiling on that. And let's see if I can get you a shot here. So looking at the bottom here, you can see where we're going to be putting our ceiling, which is an eighth inch thick. It's going to butt right up against here, and uh, I've got about three quarter inch that I can make sure that it's all fastened across as we bend it around and uh, make it look nice. And then we can put the phylon on and probably do a little bit of diamond place. So this ought to be pretty flush when it's all said and done. and. Uh, well, that was step two. The third thing I did is I went ahead and installed my stabilizer here on the back. I had one installed on this side when the trailer was outside, upside down. And I had to wait, order one, and uh, when it arrived, so I went ahead and got that installed. So, uh, I guess I should grab a hold of it. Anyway. Uh, yep, it's solid. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was the third thing I did, and I think it turned out fine. Then the last thing I did, to keep everything kind of uniform in the back, not so much utilitarian, but a little machinery looking, is I installed, uh, in a previous video, this top edge right here, aluminum, and... I had installed this one here, aluminum, and then I went ahead and cut pieces for each of the bottom of the drawers and attached those. And that way, when you're opening and closing these, if there's anything on the ground, a chair or tables or anything, if you bump into it, your drawers are protected. And uh, it gives it that look that it all is the same, should be there, looks good. Uh, we still have one piece of trim that we're going to be putting on the back here and a rail that goes across that also. So once that's on then the back is done. Alright, now we're going to get ready and install our spar here across the front. So <clears throat> I had a 8 foot piece of 1 by 4 by 3 quarter inch and I cut that in half stacked it and glued it and that is going to be our piece that we're going to be running across the front here so the first thing I need to do is true up one edge then we're going to cut it 
to length here and then we'll set it in place and mark it for our angle and uh, once that's done then we can cut the front here for this angle and well then we're ready to pull out the uh, wood to bend around for our ceiling so let's get this piece cut and fit and then we'll do a little bit of unboxing Okay, so we have it cut to width and uh, our length. Anyway, this way, wide. And our inside dimension is 46 and a half inches. So at this point, I'm just going to guess at everything that I'm doing here just for this front piece. It's all hidden behind a wall, so it won't be seen. And what I've done is from this front edge here, I measure back three inches. And that's where I'm going to place the front of my board. Then I mark the top here where this angle or this radius touches. And then I'm going to cut that at an angle like that. And uh, that should give me the inside edge. And well, we'll see what happens after that. So we'll get that cut. And then we will figure out how we're going to get this front part here. I think it's gonna work okay. Alright, so now that we have our line drawn across here, we gotta set our table saw up for an angle. So, what I'm gonna use is my combination square that can tell me the angle. So, I'm gonna loosen these screws up here, set that edge on, and rotate just a bit until I line up my mark. I'm happy with that. That tells me we are at <coughs> about 34 and a half degrees. So I'm going to set my table saw up at 34 and a half degrees. Set my wood up there and make sure it looks good on my uh, table saw. And then we will cut that bad boy. Find my thumb. Mm -hmm. All right, so I set my table saw up. I started at 34 and a half, backed it off just slightly because I've got my wood clamped on here. So I can check the angle to my blade. So let's see if you can see that line. There's our line, and our blade is about in line with that. So it's gonna be a scary cut. We'll run that through there and Hopefully that fits. All right, that was a successful cut. So our ceiling's gonna wrap around here and then about right in here, it's gonna rest on our piece of wood and flatten out about right in here, half inch or so away. And then we'll put a piece of trim across here in the front, hide any seams. So that was good and happy to report. I kept all my fingers. Eh. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and screw fasten this on from underneath. We'll use some truss head screws, probably about an inch and a quarter, and then this will be in place. Then we can unbox our ceiling, and uh, well, we'll see what that looks like sitting on top. We'll have to trim it because it's uh, eight feet wide, and I think the inside of our dimension here is about 47 and a half so uh, we'll have to figure a way to get that trimmed real quick and then we can set it in place bend it over and hope everything looks pretty okay so now I have my spar here positioned in place we got it clamped we're gonna go under pre-drill and then we'll insert our fasteners and this piece will be attached 
So uh, let me show you about the gap here and what I used to make sure I got it about where I want it. Uh, like I said, it's not a crucial piece. It's behind the wall. Nobody's going to see it, so really it doesn't matter what you use. I'm just using it so when my ceiling comes down and meets the floor, it has something to rest on, and uh, I, I can glue and attach along that edge. So the ceiling wood that I'll be using is an eighth of an inch uh, bendable plywood. I could have probably got away with quarter inch, but at the time, I'm like, eh, I'll just use eighth inch. It'll be easier to work with, bend it around, and uh, have no problem. So whether you use eighth inch or quarter probably doesn't matter, but uh, that's what I chose. So eighth of an inch thick wood. So let's check our gap out. So I wanted to make sure that I had the right gap so when we put the ceiling around, it fits right snug in between our spar and the edge of our wall here. We'll have to notch about a half inch or so right here at the end. So the uh, ceiling will come down and touch the floor. Now to get this gap, I happen to have a straight edge, which is eighth of an inch thick. So I just set this in place slid it in there and that's how the ceiling is going to go just like that and then uh, like I said we'll have to notch it so it'll meet the floor uh, about a half inch and then it'll contact the floor then we can put some sort of trim on there if we want to all this is going to be hidden behind our mattress so no one is ever going to see it unless they pull up the mattress and uh, yeah so it's going to work fine find my thumb here here we are. Thumbs up. So to install our uh, spar here, I'm going to use uh, number eight, one and a quarter truss head screws, which have the uh, little head on there, which looks like kind of a washer, and that's going to do the job. So let me go ahead and pre-drill some holes, and we'll get that fastened on. We'll call that done. Then we can do a little unboxing of our ceiling and just throw a piece on there. Not sure if I'll get it cut today, but at least we can see how it bends around. All right, we now have our spar in place, ready to accept the ceiling. And uh, yeah, it's looking good. I think it's gonna fit pretty nice. Let me go underneath and show you how I installed that. And uh, then we'll get to unboxing. So basically all I did is from this edge, measured back a half inch here in between our little braces and uh, put two screws in between each one of these areas and that is nice and solid. Here's the bottom of the trailer. Look how clean it looks. The fine line's going to hold up, take care of any road rash moisture, wetness. Yeah, that should last for decades. I think it looks pretty. Okay, on with the unboxing. All right, we're gonna get ready to pull a piece of this plywood out. And I think the way it's rolled, I wanna keep, I wanna try to keep as much in the box as I can and just pull one piece out, which I think I can do. So uh, that's what I'm gonna, attempt to try. But before I do, let me say this, that today was the first time that I actually crawled under and took a look at the trailer uh, and the bottom. I'm, uh, it looks so good and I know it's going to last for a long time and it's well protected. I wish I'd have thought about doing that on the last trailer that I built. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with that and uh, that, that got me to thinking that I'm going to give a couple of shout outs here. One is uh, for Downtown Redneck. If you're watching, this is for you. So when he built his trailer, he used uh, an FRP, I think, uh, plastic kind of sheeting for the bottom of his trailer. Now he beat me to the punch. I was thinking about doing this, but as I was watching his build, he installed his before he put it on the trailer and uh, I made a comment going, you know, I was thinking about the same thing. So, you want to do him a favor, show him some love, 
go check out Downtown Rednecks videos on his trailer build and uh, he's coming a long ways enjoying it camping and he's got a lot done so good job and yeah continue to go on once you get done with that make another one and the other person I'd like to recognize is Eli Peters great job on your build you and your daughter did a fabulous job uh, he made a video him and his daughter built a trailer and man it was a great job impressed so check out those two guys' channel and I, I'm sure you're, you're going to agree that they did a fine job. All right, let's get this out of here. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be. All right. I just slapped it onto the top here, and uh, obviously it's too wide, but uh, it takes a bend really nice. And so I've got a little trimming to do to make sure that that uh, sits in there just right. I don't know if we'll be able to see anything on the inside, but. Yep, I think that's going to look pretty good. So now that I'm kind of butt up on the other side, I need to take about that much off of this edge here so it'll fit down inside of our ceiling here and then we can stretch around. This stuff is uh, pretty flimsy and uh, looking back I probably should have went with the quarter inch but with a little finagling, I think I can make the eighth inch work. I just need to get it trimmed up, get it in position, and make sure I get uh, the front tacked in. Then I can get everything pulled back and in place. And then we can start spreading the, the spars across the top. I knew I'd have a seam here on the back. And just a short piece is all I need. About that far, all the way across. And that seam is hidden behind the cabinet. So on the inside, it's going to be one piece and look pretty nice so won't have any trim trims showing on the inside so to cut this because it's pretty thin I'm just using a pair of heavy duty shears and uh, makes a nice clean cut Trimming about five eighths of an inch off. And hopefully, once it's done, we can fit in between our walls. Okay, so I have the ceiling in position here, and uh, I notched the corner out just a little bit here so I can get it down flush with the bottom of that spar. And now I think I'm just going to use some upholstery staples and keep that in place before I start bending things around and get it tacked on. So let me go ahead and get those stapled in then we'll go from the outside and work our way around and hopefully it uh, starts looking like something good. Okay so I have fastened the bottom here all the way across and like I said that'll all be covered with trim and then on the outside I'm starting to clamp things together before I uh, run the fasteners into that so let me show you what I have. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So on the outside, I took my blocks that I use when I figured out the template and put them in place and clamped them there. So I'll run a staple in in between and all the way around. And I'll probably put those about half inch apart all the way to the back. And that will uh, close in the top. And then we'll figure out where our lines are here for our cabinets and we'll get that fastened down so everything looks nice and solid. So, it's looking good. Top is almost in there.
progress so far. So we put in our bottom little spar here. We rolled our ceiling inside, tacked it down along the edge, and come outside and started clamping those up and putting our fasteners along the edge. So we're almost to the end. We have the ceiling pretty much attached except for the back end. And then for the inside, let's come around here and take a look. Move things out of the way just a tad bit. So the bottom rolled out nice. The edges come out really nice all the way around. We're about right here with our fasteners. I've got a block holding it down in the back and that will uh, close the gap here once we're down because our fasteners stop about right here. Got a little gap here and then that'll close up. Yeah, so it's looking really good. I have no fasteners attaching to the bulkhead here. Our spars will hold everything in place so this isn't going to go anywhere. I mean it's pretty solid around this corner so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's looking good. Now, let me show you what I did. So I actually had to turn my wood all the way around and start at the other end to get the front around because when I first put it in there it bowed on me and when I pushed it back it split right here look at that which is no big deal because my cabinet goes across here where I have a line we're gonna go ahead and get things fastened down take a straight edge and a knife and we'll score that that's where the seam will be so you won't see a seam on the inside of the trailer it'll be hidden on top of the cabinet which worked out great had I not split that piece of wood my seam would have been right in the middle of the cabinet so hey that worked out well all right let's get everything buttoned up all right let's take one more look on the inside shall we come on let's go so we have the ceiling on and we've got a nice edge all the way around. Closes in the top. Oh yeah. Yep, I'm liking it. Of course now with the top on, Sure did close this in quite a bit. Looks a lot smaller now. <laughs> Sweet. Cool. And the top where I trimmed it for the seam to be on top of the cabinet. So it's probably not the cleanest seam, but all that's hidden anyway. I might straighten that up so my wood is nice and straight on here. And uh, we'll bring it down. Overlap this about an inch and a half or so make that nice and clean so that is turning out to be good so we'll uh, make our piece for across the back here we'll get that on we'll get some material to make our spars and uh, we'll get those fastened on I'm not sure about my spacing just yet that's still to be in the works Yes, looking good. So we'll get the spars on, then we can wire, and then we'll do our insulation. Oh, didn't know you were with me. All right, so we've got a ceiling on. Whew. In all honesty, though, that uh, went a lot better than I thought it would with one person. I knew that the... Uh, the eighth inch plywood was going to be real flimsy and once I got it trimmed to fit and set in between the sides it actually held its shape and was easy to maneuver around. Uh, once we got it tucked in at the bottom 
I think I just notched it about a half inch on each corner and so it would slip down onto the uh, front of our little spar that we made and uh, then we just started tacking it on. So it is in place. We have one more piece that we still need to make before we can say that's closed off and uh, that won't take very long. Then we just got to go make a store run and get some material for some spars. And that's that. So we'll call this video a wrap. Uh, I do hope that you liked it and you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell notification. That way, next video pops up. You don't miss it. And if you have plans, you might want to watch the videos because there's stuff in the videos that aren't in the plans. And that will help you in your building of your teardrop. So, we're coming along quite nicely, I do believe. All right, well, that'll be the next task. I think uh, next time you see the video, I'll have this section done, which is, I'm only gonna cut about a 16 inch piece wide and just tack it in place, and that's it. And then we'll get on with the spar work. So, until next time, please stay tuned.